we enjoy celebrating in Louisiana, as I said, and especially Southwest Louisiana. So we're always gathering around a, a melting pot of some type of food, uh, and we're celebrating that food, and then we're eating that food and listening to good music while we're while we're doing it. That's where the Louisiana Playground name came from. Thanks for joining us on Louisiana's Playground, your roadmap to all things Lake Charles, Louisiana, nicely packaged into a podcast format. I'm your host, Brady Raynard. And I'm your co-host, Anna Strider. We're excited to bring you the authentic stories and experiences of Southwest Louisiana with all the tools that you need to build your personal Lake Charles itinerary. I'm excited that we finally got this thing off the ground, Anna. You know, this has been a few months in progress trying to... uh, get this podcast going and the day's finally here and we finally revealed it to the public. Yes, I'm equally as excited. Before we really get to the show and and what we've got for you, we thought it'd be a good time to uh, introduce ourselves, so to speak, and kind of allow you guys, the listeners, to kind of better understand Anna and myself. You ready, Anna? I'm ready. All right. Where are you from? I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. Spent much of my time down there in the Shenandoah Valley area and then moved to West Virginia and spent some time there before actually winding up in South Louisiana through one of my very best friends. And we were chatting one day and she simply said, you know, Anna, you would love Southeastern. You would love Louisiana. I know you've only been here once in your life, but, you know, I have an open room. You and your dog can move down here come on down. And sure enough, she was right. And I moved three months later and um, I've been here ever since. So I think that you bring an interesting perspective to our show because of the fact that you've made Louisiana home. And I've always said Louisiana is such a, a great place because you don't have to be from Louisiana to be from Louisiana. You kind of can make it your home. And what about Louisiana has made you want to stay? Well, when I moved down here, Louisiana opened its arms and welcomed me in. And I really, really agree with that line and what it means to become a Louisiana native, because that's almost how I feel living down here and spending much of my career time and college time where you really create those passions and goals of life between all of our different cultural traditions, the way football fills our weekends, the many, many festivals and events. I love to attend anything that I can in the communities here in South Louisiana, especially Southwest Louisiana. I'm able to live in the downtown area so I can walk to many of these events. So that's been a really great transition for me. I'm also a huge outdoors person. I love to kayak, love to go hiking. So the waterways and the Creole Nature Trail, Sam Houston Jones State Park, all of those assets that we have here in the community have really made this transition and my joy just shine because I'm able to be my best self here. And that's kind of the epitome of what Louisiana is. You can kind of live your best life through the experiences that we have uh, because we have just a little bit of everything. That's what makes the state and this area so great. So Brady, I know that for you, you've had a similar experience where you haven't just lived in Lake Charles, Louisiana, your entire life either. Tell us a little bit about your travels around the state and your experiences as a Louisiana native. Yeah, I consider myself a bit of a Louisiana nomad. I've lived in all four corners, whether it be for work or school or just kind of growing up. Uh, The Homa area in southeast, the Shreveport area in northwest, the Monroe area in northeast, uh, even the central area when I went to school at Northwestern State in Natchitoches and now southwest Louisiana for the last seven years or so. And You know, we've just really planted our roots here, my wife and I. We've really enjoyed being back in South Louisiana. Um, There's there's nothing like it. The weather, the food, the culture, the people. It's all so special and dear to me. As much as I enjoyed my time in other parts of the state, it always felt like home was calling in a way. And to have that call answered has, you know, been really special for me. And to be able to stay here, um, has meant a lot, obviously, and raise my family here is is something that that means a lot to raise my kids in a similar way that I was raised. I think that's really special that you have found 
Southwest Louisiana to be that home calling because I know many of us spend so much time looking for that and chasing that and the fact that you and your family get to be here and experience all the, the different things that we have to do and raise your child the way that you were raised. I think that's really special. So you mentioned a little bit for work of why you moved all around the state. Your career didn't just start in tourism. It started in sports casting, correct? Yeah, yeah. TV sports. I uh, came out of college and I worked for three years as a uh, a weekend sports anchor in the Monroe area. And then for the last seven, I was the uh, sports director at the local TV station here in Lake Charles and uh, kind of was able to cover Super Bowls and uh, conference championships and high school championships and kind of everything in between from there. And so it's been a heck of a ride for the last uh, for the last uh, 10 years, a full decade in the industry. Um, so I wanted to change. I wanted to be able to do something a little different and um you know it's funny how things work right um so to have this opportunity in the tourism space to promote a passion of mine which is louisiana which is food which is the louisiana culture i mean it's always kind of felt like a perfect fit and i get to kind of do the video side and now the podcast side and i think that's what makes this podcast exciting for me i think we're going to be really a great duo to bring our listeners and audience a perspective on Southwest Louisiana that they haven't heard before. And we're really excited to unearth some of those hidden gems, remind you of some of those local favorites, and just share the authentic stories that we have here in Southwest Louisiana. Well, enough about us. We've got a terrific show, the rest of the show for you, um, as we have our first guest, It'll be President CEO Kyle Edmiston of uh, Visit Lake Charles, the DMMO here in the city. Uh, Such a great guest, such a great get. He is technically our boss, but he's also (laughs) a fantastic guest. Um, And I think he'll do a great job of kind of taking us through the experiences that we offer here in Lake Charles. Before we get to our conversation with Kyle today, we're going to kick off with a segment that we call On The Eats. Ultimately, on V is a French Creole Cajun word. It means a desire, a want, which, gosh, I mean, when I talk Southwest Louisiana food, that's that I want. There is definitely a desire to put more of that on my plate. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. Each episode, Brady and I will be bringing you our personal take on where we've eaten in the community in Southwest Louisiana and talk to you a little bit about the food the atmosphere and why we love the restaurant and just I'm sure you're going to be finding a few new places to try and a few places you might have forgotten about that you need to make your way over to. The first one doesn't fit any of those because it is really the Lake Charles staple. When you think of Lake Charles restaurants, you get the recommendation. I guarantee you on the short list of everyone's list is where we open on the Eat segment. Of course, I'm talking about Daryl's Pull Boys. Daryl's really is the Lake Charles staple. I mean, when you talk, I mean, right? I I mean, when I moved here, it was the first place that I heard about of where I had to go get the Daryl special. And boy, did it not let me down. And I think one thing that has always impressed me is that they're not one of those restaurants that you open and there's two sides of the menu because they know what they do. They do it well. And there's, and they try to just take the option out. They're like, look, you get one of three choices. You're going to love any of the three that you get. Just choose. And it really does make the whole process that much easier. It's a casual spot that people come in, you know, if you're traveling with the group or the family, sports teams in town, you can always guarantee that you're going to show up and there's going to be someone to greet you right at the door. You might have a little bit of a wait if you come around lunch because it's such a hot spot, but that menu makes a huge difference in turning over tables and being able for everyone to have that comfortable experience at Daryl's. Yeah, and, and it's because of what they offer, too, I think is is really why they're such a staple. While the creation of the po' boy is still up for interpretation, it's kind of widely believed that the, a restaurant in New Orleans were feeding strikers back in, I think, 1929 or so. But it's migrated itself all over the state. It's a half loaf of French loaf bread stuffed 
to the brim with meats um, or, and, and kind of what have you. At Daryl's, they choose uh, a few different options. I personally, I love the sausage po' boy, the huge slices of, of fresh cheese with uh, sliced sausage in there, and they do a barbecue sauce on it, but it's not a kind of a sweet sauce that you would normally see. It's much more of almost a barbecue gravy is kind of the way that I would explain it, and it's not a clean sandwich, and what I mean by that is it's messy. They, I mean, they have a stack of napkins that they leave on the table to make sure, and I say stack, it's a tower because they know you're going to make a mess. Talking about the different po' boys and that the state of Louisiana is known for, that really varies across the state a little bit. Everybody does theirs a little bit differently. And I know the staple at Daryl's is the Daryl Special, which is all I've ever gotten there because it's so great. And the, the Daryl Special consists of three different meats on it, which is ham, turkey, roast beef. They have a roast beef gravy and a jalapeno mayo that isn't your typical jalapeno mayo. It's really jalapeno and mayo. <laughs> and Imagine that. Imagine that. And you can get the sandwich in either a small or a large size. I typically go with the small, but... A, a if, small fills you up. It's about six inches of sandwich is. versus, I mean, you either a half French loaf or a full French loaf. You know, ultimately when it's all said or done. Uh, comes with a bag of chips, as you kind of said, but that that Daryl special really is the what everyone really suggests. It's those meats with that gravy that is you know so rich, and the way it pairs with the cheese and the lettuce, and then that jalapeno mayo that people rave about. I mean, there's a reason that this sandwich is um, as famous as it is. Exactly, and I can promise you that I used a whole handful of that tower of napkins. So it's there for a reason. And we also ordered the cheesy bread while we were there and they have the roast beef gravy that you can dip in while you're there. Oh my goodness, it is the perfect, perfect meal. Well, and at the end of the day, what makes a pull boy so special really is the bread. The bread can make or break the sandwich and theirs so buttery, flaky, that really salty, buttery top on their bread. Uh, really ties together that sandwich. Um, there's a reason that they have the reputation they have. They absolutely know what they're doing, and they are such a staple here in southwest Louisiana. And what's really great about it is it's so conveniently located, which makes it even better and the perfect reason to stop in. So if you're coming in off the I-210 loop or if you're near McNeese State University or maybe you stopped at Prion Lake Mall right there, you're within a mile of things that you might be doing around town. So definitely stop in, grab yourself some lunch or dinner, and let us know what you thought of Daryl's. So that's it for our On The Eats segment, and we'll dive into our conversation with Kyle. From one Lake Charles staple to another, we welcome on Kyle Edmiston, the President CEO at Visit Lake Charles. He's been in the role since 2019, previously serving six years as the Director of the Louisiana Office of Tourism under two different Lieutenant Governor administrations. Needless to say... Kyle knows Louisiana, and he's been honored for it, previously being named the National State Tourism Director of the Year, while also leading Visit Lake Charles to the Convention and Visitors Bureau of the Year back in 2019. In addition, Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International has named him a Top 25 Extraordinary Mind in the United States for Marketing. Currently, he's the chair of the board for the, the Louisiana Travel Association, the past chair of the Brand USA Board of Directors, and... He serves on the executive committee of the Destinations International Board, and he's also on the board of directors for U.S. Travel Association. Welcome to the show, Kyle. I'm glad to be here with both of you. Thank you for inviting me, and let's get started. This is going to be a fun, fun, fun day. It sure is. So, as we all know, Southwest Louisiana is known for our big city entertainment and amenities combined with our small town charm that makes for a vast array of experiences, which one can add to their itinerary when visiting Lake Charles. Our opening segment with each guest will allow our listeners really to get them to know them better. And it's all centered around juxtaposing questions about how do you play in Louisiana's playground? Ooh. Okay. Well, I like to play often in Louisiana's playground when I can get away from all those uh, boards that you listed off, as well as my regular duties as CEO of Visit Lake Charles. <laughs> For sure. All right. We'll start the uh, rapid fire questions here with number one, crawfish or gumbo? Ooh. You know, I'm going to have to go with gumbo, Brady, only because it's year-round. 
Uh, I love crawfish, and, and certainly crawfish season, December to, to May, June, kind of depends on the weather. Uh, love eating crawfish. Of course, that's, you know, what we're about here is the culture and the family atmosphere, family and friends, crawfish bowl. But gumbo is year-round, and it's never too hot to eat gumbo. So don't let anybody fool you and tell you that, oh, well, I can't eat gumbo in July or August because it's too hot. No, it's never too hot. Gumbo. I endorse that message. I know you do. I'm pro. You. I'm pro gumbo. As Crawfish my over here. what did my wife has said that I have an unhealthy obsession with ordering gumbo everywhere we go. I've I don't think it's firsthand. very unhealthy. I, I don't think it's, think it's unhealthy. I just would not suggest doing it outside of the state of Louisiana because the rest of the country does not truly understand how to 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 cook a good roux. And as we all know, the gumbo is about the roux. I agree a hundred percent. All right, poolside or beachside. Poolside. Um, I love the water. I like to be out on the water, but just on a personal note, don't really like the sand all over me. You know, it just not so much. So poolside every time. I agree. And then finally, concert or comedy show? Concert. Live, live music uh, in Southwest Louisiana. You can find it seven days a week, uh, all across town, different genres. Uh, and live music to me is, is far uh, far better than uh, comedic action on the uh, on the state. Comedic action. <laughs> I like that. Yes. So now that we've gotten to know you a little bit better through our juxtaposing questions, we're going to dive into our question at hand of what is Visit Lake Charles and what do you do here? The first thing I would say is that Visit Lake Charles is a DMMO, a Destination Marketing and Management Organization, which is far more than a Convention Investors Bureau, uh, because what we do is far more uh, about not only promoting the destination, but growing the destination. And, and, and really, where you've seen uh, over the course of the last five years, um, the organizations like ours changing is being far more involved in uh, issues that affect the community, the way of life in the community, and the community citizens. For years, you didn't worry about what uh, those within the community really thought because your job was to go outside the community and bring visitors in. And now there's a, a whole different context to that. So Visit Lake Charles uh, brings opportunities for people to visit, whether it's leisure travelers, business travelers, sports events, transient, international. Uh, and, and so we spend a lot of time, effort, uh, and tax dollars to enhance the, the experience and to uh, grow the market for people who want to visit Lake Charles. We certainly have much to offer visitors in, both in-state and out-of-state for why Lake Charles is such a great destination to visit. We're smack dab in the middle of sportsman's paradise. Louisiana, hunting and fishing, obviously such a big piece of our culture and uh, the experiences that we offer. I know yourself, a bit of a, a big hunter. I know you've recently went down the Creole Nature Trail, right, in Sulphur, uh, and, and obviously down to Cameron, uh, duck hunting recently. Yes, uh, there is uh, a special season in September, teal season. It's a, 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 a specific species of duck uh, that they have the early season. Uh, and what it really allows us to do uh, during the, the, the three-week season is – what is called cast and blast. And so, of course, not only do we have great uh, hunting, but we, we are Louisiana's playground, sportsman's paradise, is we have great fishing. And so cast and blast is an opportunity to fish in the afternoon and hunt teal in the morning. Teal are very fast, uh, and, and most of the action happens very quickly. Uh, by 8 a.m., if you're not finished, you're probably going to have a hard time getting your limit that day. Uh, and so you can hunt first thing in the morning, and then fish in the afternoon or uh, with our guide services, you actually come in uh, the day before around noon, you fish in the afternoon, uh, spend the night, and then hunt the next morning, uh, uh, mostly in the marsh and in the rice fields. Uh, but it is, uh, like I said, there's no place like it in the world. Uh, and it's a special, as I said, three weeks. And so it, don't, it happens uh, from the second weekend in September to the end of September. Uh, and then it closes, and then during regular duck season, uh, which will uh, begin in November again, we have guides all over uh, the rice fields and the and the marsh area, 
uh, that can really enhance uh, people who want to come and, and stay and play uh, and uh, experience duck hunting uh, at its finest. Yeah, and you kind of touched on fishing. We've got so many opportunities here, whether it's the you know in the Gulf there uh, down in Cameron Parish, guide services like what they offer at Big Like, or if you just want to crab on the side of the road, what do you think that offers someone that that wants to come down? And it feels like the, the the best thing about it is that different experience levels. You kind of we have something for each and every experience level. Right. Uh, we have several of the guide services that that also operate lodges. Uh, and so you can literally stay on property with them. Uh, they have chefs that provide, uh, you know, five star uh, meals while you're staying there. Uh, and literally you walk out of your bedroom and, and, and onto the boat uh, to go fishing. Uh, likewise, uh, we have some guide services that that aren't tied to any properties, and so you can stay where you want to stay. So you can stay in the Lake Charles area and 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 have a uh, lower cost experience at some of our hotel properties, and then drive the twenty minutes to the guide service and 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 and, and fish, and then come back and, and and take part in the day. Or if you would like, you can stay at uh, Laberge or Golden Nugget. The guides will actually pick you up at their marinas on the backside take you to Big Lake or wherever the fish are biting, catch your fish, and, and, and bring you back. Uh, and you can spend the afternoon uh, playing golf, going to the spa, hanging out at the Lazy River. And, and so the, the experiences, as you mentioned, Brady, are just uh, a, a wide variety of outdoor or luxury all around uh, catching fish in, at uh, Big Lake and Calcasieu Parish. Can I assume on this recent trip that you went down to the Creole Nature Trail that you all caught your limit of fish? We actually did not catch our limit of fish. We killed our limit of teal, uh, but we we, uh, we were catching uh, redfish, and we actually did not catch our limit. But we caught enough that my freezer is now full, and so uh, I'm feeling really good about uh, getting to cook some redfish on the half shell here in the coming weeks when the temperature drops a little bit. Well, speaking of the temperature dropping, that means that it's festival and event season here in southwest Louisiana, and we have festival events going on year-round. Can you talk a little bit about those? Sure. You know, we're, we're definitely uh, the festival capital of Louisiana as well. Over 75 fairs and festivals during the year. Uh, you know, spring is, is a huge time for festivals. And again, we talked about the crawfish when we were doing the juxtaposition questions and, and so much of the, the, the weather is perfect. Uh, going into fall now, we've got several uh, events coming up uh, in the next month, uh, month and a half uh, that starts with R Rouge et Blanc, which is a, a great fundraising opportunity for banners at McNeese, uh, which is, is a wine and food event. Uh, and, and again, that will actually be uh, on the campus of McNeese and, and the tickets have uh, sold out already. Uh, maybe folks should uh, plan now for uh, what they want to do in 2023 when the tickets go up for sale. Uh, in, uh, later in October is uh, Chuck Fest. Uh, and again, that's a celebration of food and, and music, downtown Lake Charles, uh, multiple stages all day uh, on October the 22nd. Uh, and, and it will be, uh, again, a, a full day of celebration. The weather should be perfect uh, mid-October to do that. Uh, and then on up into November, one of our largest festivals, which is a relatively new festival, Smoking Barrel. And Smoking Barrel celebrates um, whiskey, bourbon, and, and barbecue. And again, how can you go wrong with bourbon and barbecue? And they'll have some live music out there, but, uh, you know, Pretty much every weekend in the fall and every weekend in the spring, we have festivals and, or, or in live music celebrating food, celebrating culture, celebrating the music uh, of our state and specifically of southwest Louisiana. I love that feeling that if you come down sometime in the spring, chances are we're celebrating something. You know, there, there, there's no question that we enjoy celebrating in Louisiana, as I said, and especially southwest Louisiana. So we're always gathering around a, a melting pot of some type of food uh, and we're celebrating that food and then we're eating that food and listening to good music while we're while we're doing it. So it's uh, uh, again, that's where the, the Louisiana's playground name came from when we were branding both our, our, our local citizens and our visitors uh, had uh, input into that, and, and it's no question that it's very true. When you come, you're going to have a good time. And that's a 
whether you're in downtown, in the Sulphur, Moss Bluff area, they have festivals going on throughout the year. And then also we have great entertainment and regional and national acts that come into our casinos that are a huge draw for visitors and locals alike to hang out there as well. Absolutely. In, in, the, in the last few weeks, I've seen uh, Jamie Johnson, Travis Tritt, and Clint Black. As you can tell, I do have a affinity for country music, but uh, I'm right there with you. But 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 all three of those are, are national acts that are traveling through and and, and made stops here at, at uh, different ones of our uh, casino resort properties. Uh, and the the entertainment list that both of them have is long and extensive. Uh, and then, like I said, do we we have great local acts that you can see at live at the lakefront downtown alive all of the different festivals chuck fest and smoke and barrel all bring that local music uh flavor out and so it, it is a great time to be in lake charles louisiana now you had mentioned uh, a while ago kind of gathering around the table to eat if there's one thing and I, and I say it as often as i can if there's one thing that louisiana knows it's food at the end of the day um with what we offer here i think it's such a special place in terms of the variety uh, of what we can give you, whether it's kind of an upscale experience, kind of, or maybe even a down home kind of meal. The list is impressive. The variety, the list, uh, and the number of locally owned restaurants is very impressive. Uh, again, uh, because of where we're located and, and uh, you know, the Golden Nugget has nothing but Landry's restaurants in it. And there are some outstanding restaurants there. And, uh, you know, La Berge is certainly up uh, their culinary game and, and, and have one of our most famous chefs, uh, Lyle Broussard, uh, there who has participated with us in every one of the Louisiana culinary trails. But when you get outside of those two properties, the number of locally owned, locally sourced, uh, I would, I would call it farm to table, but it's really seat to table. Uh, and, and again, you know, understanding that we're 30 miles from the Gulf of Mexico. So we're, we're dealing with the freshest of, of Louisiana seafood uh, every day. And so that that really allows these chefs in, in these restaurants to uh, provide uh, an opportunity to, to sample some of the best and, and brightest in the, in, in the world. You had mentioned some of the uh, more fine dining kind of there, but we also really specialize because at the end of the day, Cajun cooking is about cooking from your heart, cooking from the soul. And we have a lot of that too. We do. One of, I have many, but one of my favorite places to eat uh, lunch is Mama Rita's. And, you know, Mama cooks some of the best fried chicken. And, you know, she was displaced after the storm, went over to Lafayette for a little while, and is now reopened. She's just off of I-10. You can drive through and pick it up. Uh, and, and like I said, she does a different plate lunch every day, uh, but her specialty is the fried chicken. And, and so just getting by Mama Rita's is, is great. You know, we've got Miss Johnny's uh, pies. And, and again, if you haven't experienced one of those, I highly suggest that you put Miss Johnny's on your list and stop by. Uh, it, you know, it's outstanding. And you just can't find that anywhere else. It's a one of a kind. It's not a chain. It's not something that you can get somewhere else down the road. You have to be in our community to, to go by and get Miss Johnny's pies. Yeah, that's smothered chicken that Mama Rita does. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think about it daily. It's, and it's a little dangerous because her proximity to our office is really close. And so, you know, I can only I can only do it once a month or so because, you know, I have to stay fitted into my clothes. And, 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 and you know, Mama give, Mama Rita's gives you a lot to eat for lunch. It, 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 she piles the food on. For sure. Um, obviously, as part of the playground, too, tons of great places to grab a drink, even if you're not interested in uh, kind of indulging, so to speak, on uh, the great culinary scene. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, we, we've got some mixologists that are, that are, uh, as good as anywhere you can find in the world. And, you know, there's a, a, a new restaurant in town, James 710, and, and they've got some, some really creative, uh, minds that are working behind the bar and, and the way that they mix some things together. And so, you know, and, and a multitude of our restaurants do the same thing. Luna bar and grill has some great mixologists. Uh, and, and like I said, Typically from, you know, four to six, you can go in and, and have some of these specialty cocktails. Uh, typically they have something special from an appetizer or something that you can snack on that, that again, uh, teases your, your culinary delights. It's all part of the culinary scene that, that, that is what we offer here in Southwest Louisiana. And then beyond that, because of what sports is to Louisiana, 
we've got a lot of great places to even kind of watch the game. And, you know, it, you're never too far from a game here in Louisiana either. We've always had great places here to uh, to watch sports. And, uh, you know, walk-ons is a, is a nationally known uh, entity, and, and they've been here in Lake Charles for quite a while. Uh, but we've just opened a, a, a new uh, sports place called The Goat, G-O-A-T, as for you sports fans or for you <laughs> non-sports fans. Uh, it stands for greatest of all time. And, and there's always a discussion on, on any sport on who is the GOAT. Uh, and then, of course, in our uh, casino properties with the advent of sports betting, uh, we have now have the, the world's largest barstool sports and the world's largest DraftKings, uh, and soon to have uh, a, a Caesars property that that's going to have a sports book as well. And the the visuals in the two that are open, and I'm absolutely positive the horseshoe will will, will be equal, are just fantastic. I mean, they have massive screens. Literally, you can't turn in any direction and not watch a game or the sports. Uh, the food in both of those places is outstanding. And, and so, I mean, it's just a great place to come spend a Saturday, a Sunday, a Monday, a Thursday, a any Tuesday, day. or a Wednesday. Oh, any day of the any week. Day of the week. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like every guy or girl's uh, kind of sports cave personified. Yes. You sit in these comfortable seats and they bring you drinks and cocktails and then they bring you this food and you're, you're literally watching every game that's going on around the country at the same time. And it, it just entices you and, and you look and you look at your watch and all of a sudden you've been there two hours, three hours. It just grabs you and holds you in those spots. It's definitely an experience one needs to take part in to truly understand. Obviously, earlier this year, sports getting became legal in Louisiana and you could then... While you're watching the game, you feel like, you know what, this is, you know, something's about to happen. I have a feeling you can, they bet they're in there, um, actually in the facilities as, as well as on your phones, but you can bet they're in the facilities. Um, and that's something that we offer here too, within those restaurants. It's about the experience. I mean, if you want to, uh, part of the, the sports betting is certainly the legalization of mobile sports betting. And so you can sit in your house, uh, in one of the, the, 55 parishes in Louisiana that, that legalized it. It wasn't all 64. Um, and, and make that bet and watch it on your own TV. And, and, and that's fine. And if that's what you want to do, we, we certainly are supportive of that. But the experience of coming out to a DraftKings uh, of a, a bar stool is completely different. And, and you're engulfed with the fans. It's like being in the, in the stadium itself with the seating. Uh, and again, People have skin in the game, so they're, they're very interested in who scores and who does what and what how the game ends, and, and you just that level of excitement that's tied to that, uh, and then you add to that the, the, the food and beverage that they offer. It, it's Like I said, it's an experience like you can't get anywhere else. Seeing the sports there on the screen, to see it in person, obviously having a Division I university in town like McNeese State, such a great great get for Lake Charles having that as an opportunity when you come and visit, uh, being able to see future, and we've seen it, future NFL, future MLB, even future um, professional softball players have all kind of graced these fields at McNeese State. And I know you take part in a lot of uh, football games you go and see in baseball. I know baseball is big in, in the Edmondson household. Uh, yes, it is. Like I said, our uh, our son's playing at uh, LSUE. But you know, having football back at McNeese is such a huge part, of, again, of, of our community. Uh, the team itself is certainly growing and it's going to only get better. Uh, but it, it's a huge part of, of the South and certainly a huge part of what we do here uh, in Southwest Louisiana. I was at the tailgate as well. And just the energy that was radiating from everybody who was there with the band and the students on campus. And I know they had their block parties back the night before, which has been a really great asset to really just amplify everything going on with the sports at McNeese this year. Well, and, and Anna, you mentioned it. So uh, we, we, we talked earlier about all the culinary experiences in Southwest Louisiana. And, and one of the best culinary experiences you can get is going to a tailgate in the state of Louisiana and certainly in it, out at McNeese. You just walk around and you can smell what people are cooking. And again, the people will invite you to join their tailgate and happily let you partake in whatever they've cooked. And it's some of the be it's some of the best food you can find anywhere right there in the parking lot. We certainly want to share when we have it too. That's right. Everybody wants to share. 
Well, if you want to actually get into the game, our golf scene has really improved over the, over the last uh, few years in terms of what we've been able to bring guests to multiple courses there at our casino resorts. And even Mallard, uh, our new city course, uh, kind of a Scottish-based, if you kind of watch the, uh, the Open this year. So much on the golf scene. I know you're a big golfer, too. Well, I play. I, I would not say that, <laughs> that I play well, but I play. I do enjoy being out there. And, and you know, Brady, the, the interesting part about Mallard is the fact that there's not a single tree anywhere on the course. It, it truly is a Scottish Lynx course that has uh, the rough, it has marsh, it has sand traps, but no trees anywhere. So for people like myself that can't necessarily control their driver all the time, it's a great place to go. And then on the flip side of that, is the course we have over in Westlake, the National, which is a fantastic golf course and, and has a brand new restaurant clubhouse that's just been completed in the last year. It was carved out of the woods. And so literally every hole has trees lining all the fairways uh, and, and, and is a beautiful uh, course itself. Uh, fun to play, but completely different than than Mallard. And then, yes, we have uh, Contraband Bayou, which is a Tom Fazio design course, and he's probably the world's foremost uh, golf course designer, and, and, and it's a challenging course. And then next door with the Country Club at Golden Nugget, um, you know, both of those courses are, are very playable. Uh, and, and, of course, if you – back up if you if you are a really good golfer you back up to the back tees uh, become very challenging from from that standpoint and again uh, both contraband and country club at golden nugget are affected because they're right on the water by the wind and again the you know it swirls it comes from different directions and and again can be a very challenging 18 holes it, it just seems here in lake charles everything we have is variety whether it be in our people in the experiences that you can have are even our golf courses. You can play at four different courses and have completely different experiences because of how each course sets itself up. Again, we go back to the very beginning, the juxtaposition. I, I think that is truly the epitome of what experiences are like, whether it's culinary, whether it's golf, whether it's outdoors, whether it's sports, whether it's leisure, whatever you're thinking about doing here. Again, the juxtaposition is there because there is a, a huge variety uh, across all of the spectrums uh, of those different activities. Well, we've talked so much about all the great things that we have currently going on in Lake Charles and Southwest Louisiana. But what's really exciting for us is that we have just as many things on our horizon. You know, after uh, Hurricane Laura and Hurricane Delta uh, we had a lot to overcome and to come back from. And, you know, the Community Foundation of Southwest Louisiana stepped forward and, and, and they got a tremendous gift uh, from uh, the Philo family uh, to, to really take an in-depth look at how we can become a more resilient community uh, and, and, and really spent time listening uh, all across uh, Southwest Louisiana to the citizens and, and uh, what, was, what was needed and what, what we had to have. Uh, to, to be a, a better place over the next 50 years. So it, this was not a three-year strategic plan or a five-year. So this is a 50-year plan uh, of growing all of Southwest Louisiana. And so the what's come from that is titled Just Imagine. And and again, it's Just Imagine what we could, could be. And as we look forward, uh, tourism is a big part of, of that Just Imagine program. Uh, since I've moved here, people have been talking about lakefront development, uh, and under Mayor Nick Hunter's leadership, we now have lakefront development. Uh, Port Wonder, a you know thirty plus thousand square foot museum, is being constructed right now on the lakefront. Uh, the former Harris parking garage, which was such an eyesore for many years, uh, right along I ten, is being uh, cleaned up. You know we've got a crying eagle is putting a, a second location on. Uh, the lake right next to uh, the museum and is going to be just a fantastic addition uh, with uh, a second floor open air uh, dining and bar that overlooks uh, the lake. Uh, we've, we've got uh, Paul's Rib Shack and Lake Area Adventures coming in uh, down more towards North Beach. Uh, and, and of course, with Lake Area Adventures, uh, that will bring uh, lake rentals that you can actually participate on on the lakefront with jet skis and and party barges and uh, 
uh, paddle boards and kayaks and all of the different water activities that are right here uh, for our citizens and our guests to enjoy. Uh, and, and then there's several more uh, things that uh, we can't quite discuss yet that, that are on the drawing board that will be coming up uh, along the lakefront. And, and again, as we are just imagining, these, these are just the start. And, um, you know, I think uh, uh, both will look and try to be open by late 2023 uh, for Crying Eagle and for, for Port Wonder. You know, obviously a lot of supply, supply chain issues going on in the country right now, and, and, and that certainly will affect their ability. But, uh, you know, they're moving dirt and, and, and will, will be open uh, very soon for our visitors. And, and so, you know, we're very excited about where that is and, and more importantly, where it's going in the next three to five years. I'm just imagining how much fun I'm going to be having in the next few years. Yes. And, and, and like I said, we, it, it, it will be such a beautiful walk. One of the things that they are already started on uh, is uh, it, it was called the boardwalk, but it wasn't made of boards. It was made of concrete. And so it didn't withstand the storms very well, but a walkway, a pathway connecting the marina, which is just uh, to the south of the, the Civic Center, all the way to North Beach. And so you can walk, you can ride your bike. It will be the connectivity to bring all of this together uh, around the entire lakefront uh, here in Lake Charles. This is all so exciting. I know there's a few other things that are on the horizon, including there's a family center that has been announced that will be coming, which will be really huge for families in the area, as well as the Louisiana Food and Wine Festival that will be happening next fall. So that's really exciting as well. Yes, uh, uh, it was just uh, announced uh, last week uh, about the Louisiana Food and Wine Festival having its inaugural event uh, next year, September of 2023, here in Lake Charles. Uh, like I said, we're very excited about adding this uh, to that fall schedule. And again, you, you see by the dates, uh, early September, mid-September, it falls right in there in line with the other food and, and, and festival events that we have for the fall. And so again, it will just stack up and, and fit perfectly with what we already have uh, and add a new element that we haven't had before. Well, we thank you for spending some time with us to uh, discuss your experiences and, and all that we offer as a destination. Well, we, we feel like we certainly have a, a place where people want to come, they want to relax, and they want to have fun. And we are Louisiana's playground, and how you choose to play, you come and see us. All right, thanks again for Kyle for joining the show, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us here on the podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcast. We'll help us grow our audience and further share the unique experience Lake Charles in southwest Louisiana has to offer. Go to visitlakecharles.org for more episodes, where to eat, and events happening this weekend. And if you're in town, right off the exit is our visitor center, so you can stop in and see us. I'm Anna Strider. And I'm Brady Raynard. Thanks for coming play at Louisiana's Playground. Stay tuned.